Yeah, so thanks so much for, for taking the time to uh, to talk. And I'll, I'll admit, I don't think I've ever done an interview in front of, what, like 17, almost 18,000 people. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess for those who don't know, um, I'll be writing the, the cover story for Chess Life magazine uh, for the August issue. And a main focus will be on kind of the chess boom on Twitch. And of course, your story, especially with the just insane growth over the last few months mm -hmm. so um did you want to like play a hand and brain game while we do this or um, do you want to chat I mean, first and then i i guess let, let, let me see um what, what chaspe thinks uh, sure okay she yeah she's she says yes okay so yeah so i i think let, let me go back to live chess actually i'm in the wrong window um yeah so i think a game will automatically start so uh so I, I think they'll just automatically start the game Oh, I have to follow you though. Oh, oh, actually, do you want me to be the hand or do you want to be the hand? Okay, I guess I'll be the hand. <laughs> okay, pawn. Okay. Uh, let me follow you. Well, well, we didn't start the game yet, so there's, there's no. Ah, no okay. Rush. Yeah. Okay, I should be following you. All right, so um, I, mm -hmm. I have a bunch of questions prepared. We probably won't get to all of them, but um, sure. Pawn, okay. I do want to have like a big kind of picture overview of, uh, of what's been happening night. Okay. Um, so maybe we can start with just the general stats, uh, sure. Pawn. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I took a look at like, your, um, your solely gnome stats and Twitch metrics uh, night. And you've been, um, I mean, just in terms of the last 30 days, you, you've averaged uh, like a, a stadium full of, of viewers. You've, um, you've peaked at 40,000 viewers. Um, so I wanted to ask first, like, how much do you look at and focus on the stats? And um, like, what are the most important stats to you? Yeah, so I mean, I, I have checked every so often in terms nice. of like the, uh, what'd you say? Night. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I have looked every so often in terms of the stats. Don't don't worry. I mean, if we if okay. it takes like a minute on this Pawn. move, um, but yeah, I, I guess I guess what I would say in general terms is that the the way I do look at the stats every so often, but it's not something I look at day to day. I think when you look day to day, it's like it's kind of neurotic. Like you start focusing too much on these things that really you shouldn't be focusing on objectively. Because at the end of the day, you want to have growth, but looking looking at it every single day and seeing like, okay, you got X amount of followers, and then you got more, you got less. Um, I, I think it's it, that's it's not. I try not to look at that because I think there are going to be periods where you have more growth and periods where you have less. And especially since my channel has grown so fast, um, it's grown so quickly over the last like two months. I would say you know at some point the numbers are going to go down a, a little bit. I mean you you assume they will. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those things where if I look every single day and then I have a day like you know for example I think yesterday I, I had I had less followers. Um, than I had had in a while. So, so like if I look at the followers, I see that I have like, you know, 3000 followers or something versus say 6,000 the previous day. It's like, it can kind of affect you. I think if you look every single day. So I try not to look, um, but I would say overall followers is, uh, they adjusted the clock. So there's, there's no rush. Now. Um, so, so I, I think followers is probably the number that I look at the most. Uh, but the, I mean, the su sub, of course, it, sub number is, is nice to see as well. But mainly, mainly followers, I think. Followers and probably the 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 viewer hours. Bishop. Gotcha. So, um, and in terms of like the growth, uh, especially over the last month, um, like what are like what have what's been the driving force? Has it been collaborations? Has it just been like consistency in terms of like numbers of hours streamed or I mean, is it just a, a wide combination of things? I think it's a combination of sort of everything happening at the right time. I think, I think the channel was already starting to go prior to the collaborations. I think, um, but the, the first XC collaboration I did, I believe was on like April 1st or April 2nd, but even before that, my channel, if I go pawn. back to say pawn, okay. If, if I go back to say March, for example, I think I, the channel was somewhere like in the low 2000 to 3000 in terms of viewers. And then progressively as the month was going on, I think towards the end of March, it was already up near like six, 7,000 for a couple of the streams. 
um, prior to the XQC uh, collaboration. But I think the XQC collaboration really sort of uh, blew it Bishop. out of the water because the, the fact that XQC is such a popular streamer and he has so many fans who watch him and, uh, and he started playing chess certainly, uh, certainly made the boom occur. And then the fact that all these other streamers sort of saw the success he was having, the fact that people could play chess and not lose viewership, I, th I think um, that, that really propelled it to the whole different Pong. level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and like in terms of collabing with with other streamers, like were you usually the one reaching out, or like once you collab with XQC, like what was the process for for just setting up like collaboration after collaboration? Right. So I, in terms of collaborations, they were all very King. random. So what the, what's that? King. King. Okay. So so in terms of like the collaborations, like I, I know there's some there's some people who think that these things were sort of set up in advance or, or things were going on, but actually like in terms of XUC, the way it works, and this is something that occurs very naturally on Twitch is that, uh, hit, my chat would tell me that XUC was playing chess. And so, so like I, w I they pestered me for a few days, by the way, there, there was this period, I think towards the end of, of March when there were a few days in a row where he's playing chess and they're pestering me. They're like, go watch XUC, go watch XUC. And I wasn't yep. actually watching XUC. And then finally I gave in. And so it's sort of one of those things where my, my chat told me to go watch. And then his chat told, told, told him that, that I was watching him. And that's what led to, uh, led to that collaboration, which by the way, was completely on the fly. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we sort of, I mean, it literally was, I sent him a DM, like, do you want to look at chess? He's like, yeah, sure. And then we hopped on a discord call and, and then, then you, you go from there. Um, so the XCC stuff was, uh, completely by chance. I, I think, you know, after that, um, the next person I really did something with was Voy boy. I, I think Boy Boy was the second guy, but that, that also was completely random because I think it was one of the mornings when I was playing in the Magnus tournament, and um, and and I just happened to see Boy Boy was streaming chess. I, I don't really remember why I saw that, but I did, and um, and then kind of from there, uh, you, you you sort of just pop up the stream, and I, once once the streamers know know each other, I think it's very easy because everybody everybody chats on Discord. So after the first couple of X, you see, um, it's sort of just like it, it was just like very basic conversations, and everyone was 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 going with it. Rook. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and I, I do want to talk about the chat too, because it, it's been even like compared to a few months ago, just the, the speed at which the chat goes is is insane, mm -hmm. and it's in slow mode right now, and it's just going at lightning speed. Uh, pawn. Okay. So, like, do you have a sense of what your typical viewer, like, who your typical viewer is? Is it like a lot of adults who are just getting back into chess? Is it? kind of a younger generation of players maybe the chat can answer this too like who, <laughs> who who exactly are you where do you come from yeah i mean my take is that one thing that's very different is Queen. uh sure so is that if i go back to maybe a couple months ago when i was streaming i think the chat was primarily people who were fairly serious about chess people who play chess semi-competitively probably around the rating range of 2000 or, or, or more i would say so very serious players who had a lot of experience whereas now um, because of all the collaborations, because of the big tournaments that, that are occurring, I, I think that it's a very big mix. I think there are a lot of people who are relatively young, a lot of people who are very new to chess. Um, but I would say it's, I would say it's, if I had to give a breakdown, my guess is probably like, I would say it's probably like 65, 70% probably, I think, are between the ages of 18 to 25. And then probably like the rest, like I, I said, 65%, right? 65, 70. Mm -hmm. So probably then the last, like, you know, 25, 30% are probably like, like, you know, 30, 30 to 40 ish or, or 30 on up. Um, but I, I think it's, it's a, it's a wide mix of people who play chess seriously, people who are just getting into the game. Um, it, it's just a big mix across the board at this point. What'd you say? Pawn? Uh, pawn. Okay. Yeah. And, um, is it like, uh, is it overwhelming or is it energy draining when like you're, you're streaming on average well over six hours a day? Mm -hmm. Um, so how, like, where do you find the energy to, uh, I guess, to stay motivated and, uh, to put on a show like day after day after day? Yeah. I mean, I think in terms of, in terms of that, it's, it's all about the people who are watching. I, I think when, mm -hmm. when you know, there's so many people who are watching, um, and who are enjoying the content that you're providing. I think that certainly gives, gives a huge boost motivationally to, to, to stream because when you know, you know, you're bringing something to people that they're really enjoying, especially in this time when people don't have a lot of options for entertainment or things to things to enjoy. Uh, it's, I think that more than anything, just knowing there's so many people who love, who love the content, who love, who love what I'm doing, um, that that's more than enough, uh, in the way of energy. Sure. I need to drink coffee as well, but, uh, but that does, that does, uh, make a big difference. 
And does it feel, does it ever feel like work to you? Or is it more of just like a passion? Like, is, is it just natural for you to stream every day? Or is it feel like going to work for you? Yeah, I, I think um, for me, it's, it's, I really enjoy it. One, one thing that I know from playing chess professionally is very oftentimes a lot of people have come up to me during tournaments or, or otherwise. Um, and what, what they do is very often they're like, you're very lucky to play a game that you, that you love, that you enjoy. It's not like a normal job where you just have to go in every single day um, to work and, and do something boring. So, so, so for me, I actually do looking at, look at streaming the same way. I don't really consider a job. There are certain days when I'm tired after, after streaming for quite a few hours, or if I play a term in the morning, then I stream, but mainly for me, I, I'm loving it. I'm, en I'm enjoying it. I, th I think the, the, the thing for me, and this is why I think most people can tell that I'm enjoying it is because I've Fun. done, sure. I've done many of these, uh, many of these collaborations. I'll give you an exa example specifically. So, so last night I was helping out Foosley. Um, now she's, she's very new to chess. Um, hasn't had a lot of experience, but when I, when I'm teaching someone who's a beginner on that skill as, as a very strong chess player, I could get very frustrated at sort of the, the sort of the ideas or the, or the lack of moves that she's seeing potentially. Um, but I actually really enjoy seeing the learning process. So when, when I do these collaborations with these various streamers it, and, and I'm not actually not frustrated at all, I'm really enjoying it for me. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, so I, I really, it's just a passion. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving every second of it. And, uh, I, I just, um, yeah, it's just it's just been great. Pong. Yeah, and uh, as like as a fellow streamer and, and viewer to like so many of your streams, it's um I mean it's content that I think like none of us would have realized is just so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun to watch. It's um I mean, I, I don't want to insult anyone with this comparison, but it's like a math professor teaching like a, a little kid, like the just the basics. Um and it's, it's just uh, I think just in terms of your personality meshing with these other streamers' personalities, it's um, it's it's great entertainment. Um, so I do want to ask, like outside of your outside of the time that you're live on stream, like mm -hmm. what what do you do on a, a daily basis? Like what does an average day look like outside yeah. of streaming? <laughs> I mean, lately I've actually been playing quite a few games off of stream as well. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I mean, I I've been playing Valorant and and, and some some other things. Uh, you said Pawn, right? Pawn, Just, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do this one. So, so I, I have been playing other games off of stream as well. Um, but, but mainly, mainly because there have been other chess tournaments going on, like these Magnus terms, like the Lindoris Abbey or the Magnus Carlson Invitational. Um, normally I play the tournament, I stream, and then like I eat dinner and go to bed for the most part. Late, lately, I've, these last couple of days, I've had more time. So I've started playing other games off stream, but mostly it's, it's about trying to, um, Try, trying to figure out a schedule of what I'm doing on the following day, especially with pog champs going on right now. And um, mm -hmm. so, so mainly chess, a little bit of games, maybe like watching some shows, but it's, nice. it's, it's all about the stream, all about the stream for sure. And do you have time, like you're, you're still competing in these high level online events. Do you have time to like study chess? And what, mm -hmm. like, if you do, what does that look like? Yeah, I do. I do definitely study chess before these matches that I'm playing in the, in the serious tournaments. Um, uh, what, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at my poll. 18 to 25 is 58%. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, so, okay, let's, let's push this pawn. Um, or actually, what is it? Yeah. It, the, the poll is what it's 18 to 25 with 58%. Um, 12 to 18 is, uh, is 16%. And then 25 to 35 is 22%. And uh, 35 to 50 is two percent so so pretty much what i said it's it's that it's in that mm -hmm. that spot between 18 and 35 pretty much uh do you say a move um i'm i'm still perplexed john is is putting on the pressure mm -hmm. and i don't want to get forked uh let's do let's do queen okay um so Oh, right. So you actually you asked a question uh, yeah. I didn't respond to. You were, you were asking about um, whether I whether I find time to study. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, I, I definitely do study. Again, these are rapid events. So one thing that I've always loved about rapid chess more than classical chess is that when you play these quicker games, you have to use your intuition more. It's not about like looking at it as a math problem. You try to get to a position and then players kind of have less time, but they have to make good decisions nonetheless, but they're on the fly. Whereas... Um, Knights. Whereas uh, in classical chess, it's all about pure precision. So it is basically a math problem where you try to find the absolute best move every single time. So um, I, I do study. Luckily, with rapid chess, it's a little bit easier. Um, but I do, I do put in a few hours uh, during these events every day. Gotcha. 
And now I wanted to bring up, I think it was one of your clips that went viral for a bit about, it was just like a, a 15 second thing of what you said about kind of scaling back professional chess and devoting mm -hmm. more time to, to basically being a full-time streamer. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Like what, like what do you see kind of your f future career as? Are you going to continue streaming every day? Will there be more, more online events like PogChamps or do you still like envision competing um mm -hmm. at least when over the board tournaments become possible again do you do you envision going back to those yeah so i mean i think we're at an interesting interesting point in time certainly we haven't been in a situation like this like, well at least not in our, not in our lifetime where mm -hmm. everyone has been stuck at home because because of because of covid so i think we're seeing a lot more online chess terms i think from that standpoint it's 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 a good step in the right direction i've for a long time i firmly believe that chess should be online i do think that rapid chess and blitz chess is the future um is there a move rook um so for a long time now i believe that like online chess and specifically rapid and blitz chess it is the future so for me this feels like a very logical progression um going forward with the game of chess and uh and i certainly will be playing more chess i will be playing chess over the board still but i do think you will see more tournaments online and as the game becomes more accessible like that uh, I think it's it's much more suited to playing online and and being more of a full time streamer as well. But I'm I'm not going to stop playing chess. I I will keep playing chess as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen, and you have like you're already one of the most I guess popular streamers like overall on Twitch. Do you have goals set up for yourself like in terms of um, further growth, in terms of sponsorship deals, or just growing more on other platforms? Like what do you see your goals being the next? Like short term and long term. Yeah, I, I don't really have set goals in mind. I think I think the main thing that I'm focusing on is um is just doing what I'm doing. It seems to be working. There are a lot of people who love the content. There there are many people watching it. Uh, but watching this, but also watching watching PogChamp. So one of the things that things that I think is very important to recognize when when you look at uh when you look at the success of chess on Twitch, uh, is there a move? King. Okay. Is when when you look at the success of chess on Twitch, one thing that I think a lot of people have, have tried to say is that Queen. specifically like. It's let's see. Um, I guess I'll go here. Is people have said that it's specifically related to um, like my personality or related to say Alexandra Botez's personality. But when you look at these big events um, that have been covered on my channel, like this Lindoris event, for example, uh, where I think there was somewhere around forty-five thousand watching it when I was playing in it, or you look at Pog Champs yesterday, where I think there were sixty thousand people watching at one point. It shows that people do enjoy the the competition. They really are getting into it in a, in a way that. Uh, in, in a way that shows that chess really is growing. Um, so I, I don't have, I don't really have goals in terms of like viewership or followers, but I think for me, just seeing the game growing, it proves that chess is a game that a lot of people enjoy. And, um, and, and I think it's going to remain, remain popular for a while. Nice. I also want to um, address the fact that, um, I mean, not only has your channel just blown up, but uh, do let's do King. King? Oh, actually, no, let's not do King. Uh, let's do Knight. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It, it's, it's not easy to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not used to. <laughs> I, I mean, I would add that's one thing actually. By the way, that I think I'm I'm very fortunate is that I'm I'm very lucky that I can I can multitask pretty easily. Like I can I can still talk yeah. to you, or I can I can talk to my chat, and I can still play relatively high level chess. I, I know there are many people that where it's 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 a serious challenge trying to do both of those things. And I think that's one thing that really uh, really has helped is that I for the most part I can still play chess reasonably well, um, even if I'm talking to the chat. Yeah, it's hard for me to talk and, and see a, just a diagonal at the, at the same time. Um, but I wanted to ask about just an uh, explosion of, of new streamers uh, or new mm -hmm. chess streamers on Twitch. Uh, I said Queen. Sure. And the fact that, um, like, I think compared to several months ago, there, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of, of new people streaming, on, streaming chess on Twitch, um, as well as YouTube. Um, so do you have advice for like newer, I guess, newer chess streamers in terms of best practices and of yeah, I mean, I, the, I think, I think, I think the, the, there, there are many things that the streamers can do. Um, certainly, 
one of the most important things is, is build is, is building building the community from the start and and building it in a way where you stream you put in the hours but you try to get people who are coming to your channel where they are going to stay you, you want to give them something that they're going to enjoy and, and and i've seen many big streamers talk about this where it's like well what what can you do to differentiate yourself so obviously chess is chess is very big right now it's very very popular but you have to do something that makes people want to come and watch the stream so like in my case for example i'm i'm a very strong chess player i'm i'm one of the best in the world at blitz chess so so i have something like that whereas a, a lot of streamers might not have that specific thing so if you're if you're not say at the very top of the the field what you need to do is you, you have to have personality you have to you have to give people a show you have to give them something that's different than what they're going to find on the other channels um and i think that's the most important thing is just whether it's like doing you know playing at your subscribers whether it's uh trying to do blindfold chess or you know for example there's this there's this this brilliant guy martin leung who um uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but he he basically plays chess on his iPad while he's playing uh, playing video game tunes on on a keyboard, um, and it, so so like someone like that, for example, he's doing multiple things that are completely different. But there are many people uh, who who can do, do things along these lines where it's, it's something different that like nobody else is really doing. Queen. Okay. Yeah, and um, okay, rook. I think streaming is like uh, just outside of the chess aspect. Streaming is kind of its own skill set. So, are there are there ways that you keep kind of learning the I guess the overall industry? And are there are there like channels that you follow for for just best best practices, just general advice, or how do you stay up to date in, in terms of? just everything streaming. Yeah, actually that, that kind of relates to my daily schedule in a way. So, so I would say there are a few channels. I, I don't watch, I don't watch that much of Twitch when I'm not streaming, but I do pop into various streams, usually for a couple of minutes, at least, um, every single, every single evening after I'm done streaming, you know, like for example, XQC, yeah. I, I always pop in there mainly because I want to see the games that he's playing. Cause one thing that I do plan on doing in the future, for example, is to, um, it is to play some other games on stream and xqc is, is the king of variety he literally will play every game under the sun um uh so so what i would say is like i i follow xqc because i want to see if there's certain games that he's playing where like there might be something that interests me down the road so i'll follow him for that um obviously like the tts stuff i, I find hilarious on his stream and generally there are there are a lot of um there are, there are a lot of good donors and a lot of good memes and and also rook. because sorry what's that rook okay so, so also what I would say is because, uh, because my chat is so large now, and there are times when it is, it, it is nonstop memeing. I, I do watch the chats, uh, very closely from time to time of both XQC and force and just to see like how, how they deal with it or they ignore it and, and what their general level of interaction is. Um, so I, I actually watch both of those channels for that reason as well. Um, in terms of just other stuff, like normally I just watch for, for content, um, you know, like, like I see certain streamers, um, like, you know, Nate right. Hiller, Tifu, for example, in Fortnite, where like, just seeing, just seeing the way that, you know, they put the sub numbers up or the, or the follower numbers, these little, these little numbers and how they, how they, what their overlays are. I, I do find that, that useful, but, um, ma mainly it's, it's just watch a little bit here and there and see if there are little things people are doing, but it's not like there's any one channel that, that I think is like just miles ahead of everything else. It's just, you look and you see if there are little things they can do. And if in some way you can incorporate that into your stream. If you if you gotcha. like it, Rook. And is there is there like um, someone that you have not collabed with yet that you really want to collaborate with, like some kind of dream um, collab? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's Where a like dream collaboration. Model. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing a collaboration with Scara, um, but I I wouldn't say that's like that 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 would be really nice, but I wouldn't say that's necessarily a dream collaboration. That would be really nice, mm -hmm. but that's yeah, I don't I don't know if I have a specific <laughs> Tyler one. Yeah, Tyler one exactly chat. Tyler one. <laughs> Sorry Bishop? about that. you say Bishop? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um um Yeah, like I, I wouldn't I, I really would 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 wouldn't mind doing it with Scar. Um anyone else though, I'm trying to think. Pawn? Yeah, thanks. Um yeah, I, I don't know. I, in, in terms of Twitch personalities, I'm, I'm drawing blanks um, right Keith. off. And I, I also want to ask, because um, I know you, uh, first of all, congratulations on hitting 10,000 subscribers on Twitch, uh, Rook. Um, 
in terms of your celebration, I, I heard... I don't know how accurate this is, but I heard mm -hmm. something about jumping off a roof. Well, yeah, so this like hasn't happened yet, but I, I will do it at some point. Involved. Basically, what I, it's not jumping off a roof, actually. It's just like, uh -huh. it's just like jumping onto a trampoline uh, full of eggs. So I, I, will be, I, will be, uh, I will be doing that at some point. Do you Bishop. say a move? Bishop? Bishop. Oh. Got to watch our time, man. King. Rook. Rook. King. Rook. Rook. Nice. Very nice. Oh, that was close. That would have been a disaster if <laughs> we were very close to losing that game on multiple points. It's really, it's really not easy to. Um, I'm, I'm still learning how to talk and uh, like multitask talking and playing. <laughs> oh, and uh, and Nathan. Okay, um, pawn. Right. So, so, so you, you were asking. Uh, so the trampoline. So, yeah. So I, I will be doing that down the road, of course, in this time when like it's nice. still hard to like you know. There, there aren't many people that I, that I can talk to about this just to, to set it up, but I will be doing that down the road. Gotcha. gotcha. And then, um, want to like just imagine. Did you say a mover, uh, by the way? I didn't, I didn't hear yeah, you. Bishop. Bishop, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in terms of life after this whole pandemic, hopefully, once, once the vaccine comes out or once um, lockdowns are lifted, uh, night. Mm hmm. Um, do you imagine like more, um, I guess more live events for streamers? I mean, there is a pro chess league, uh, finals, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess, I, I guess what I would say in regards to that is certainly there have been events that have been styled like in the esports model, specifically the pro chess league where they play online oh. in the finals. You're, you're in person, you have headphones on very, very similar to like, to like, uh, like, like league, um, specifically, where, where you're facing off. Like I, I remember I was watching, I was watching some videos. I feel like it was a while ago when, when, uh, Bjerson, I think I'll, I'll mispronounce, but Bjerson was playing against a uh, faker. Um, and they both had headphones and they're both like, you know, both at a computer. So it's, it's in the same style, um, as something like league specifically. So, um, Pong. okay, sure. So like, so, so in, in that style that there have been events, I think there will be more events in that style down the road. I think Pong. it's been proven, um, you know, one of the biggest issues with chess, and this, this goes back to where the, the whole thing, like who's watching the stream, is that chess, I think, in terms of games, uh, well, I'll th you said pawn? Yes. Um, so, so, so in general terms, when you think about games, I think chess probably is one of the games that if not the most uh, popular game in the world in terms of the people who've been exposed to it. Now it's not to say that people, people play the game or they, they love the game, but I think the majority, the, you said Bishop, right? But the majority of people who, uh, uh, the, but the, but, but the number of people who have actually like seen the game and know the basic moves, even if they didn't take lessons or they don't play competitively, I think it's somewhere around like 500 or 600 million. If, if that feed a number is correct. Um, so the number of people who have been exposed to the game is so dramatically high but in terms Queen. of sponsorship or viewership, that has always been a big issue. And one of the reasons that chess has never gotten um, like really big sponsors in the way that a lot of other, other sports have. Uh, what's, what'd you say? Queen. Okay. Um, so I, I think that was the number that FIDE used. Now, now of course that, that can be disputed, but certainly um, if, you, if you think about having a number like that being exposed, where are the majority of th those people at? And most of those people are going to be beginners, people who are not, um, people who are, who are, who have not played chess their whole lives. And so in general terms, I think if you have more events where you can relate it, you can make it more relatable to people who are not, um, super grand masters or, or you know, e even masters for that matter. Um, then, Pause. then there is a big chance to have more people viewing, which of course leads to, leads to sponsorship and more general interest in the game itself. And I think at the end of the day, that's the, um, that's, that's what I really want to see is just the, the game becoming more popular because for a long time, I mean, there, there, anytime, anytime I go out, you know, in, in, 
if, if I'm just in the normal world, um, I can't, I can't recall the number of times I've talked to someone. They're like, you're, you're a chess player. Like, wow, you must be so smart. You must be a genius. So like everyone's familiar with the game, but how do you translate that into sponsors? How do you translate that into something where, um, where, where the game is really actually becoming popular? Um, so for me, that's at the end of the day, one of the driving factors. I really, I like where things are going. I think the fact you see the viewership for these events, the fact that all these streamers are having fun, um, with the game, I think that's what you want if you're trying to popularize the game. Um, in a way that is that in a way that will be sustainable down the road. Rook. Yeah, and I know that's something that uh, I think chess has struggled with over time is, is just finding sponsorship, um, especially in in the U.S. Well, I, um, I think there 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 are many reasons for that. So um, specifically related to like the the formats. Uh, actually, let's let's make a move first. Yeah, I'm thinking. Let's do pawn. Right. So, so I, I mean, of course, I, I, one of the big issues with chess is when you have these games that are very, very long, that really only appeals to people who are super hardcore. And, and of course, I am definitely a hardcore chess player. I do, I do play chess very seriously. But even for me, when I watch these classical games that go like six or seven hours, like I tune in for 10 minutes at the start. Then I like go off, I, I eat lunch, I read the newspaper, I do everything else that I'm going to do normally. Um, and then I come back you know, like five hours later to see what the results are, what games are going on. So I think when you have these sort of very long, very slow games with very little action, people don't want, people aren't really going to be interested in that unless you're extremely good at chess and you spent your whole, your whole life playing it. Um, do you say a move? Yeah, King. Okay. So, so I think that's kind of the main thing, main, main issue. And that's why I really like the format. People are being more experimental. You're seeing like blitz chess, you're seeing rapid chess, you're seeing new formats where you win a game, you get three points, you lose a game, you get zero. Like you're seeing people try to do things in a different way than what has been done for the last, you know, last uh, hundred years, I would say. And of course with, with the devs not doing anything for the last like 2000 years, I mean, it, it shows that you kind of have to move along with times and, and, and do Rook. things differently. You said Rook, right? Okay. So in terms of like new formats or even like something like PogChamps, which seems like it's already a huge success, mm -hmm. do you think it will be like a recurring, like will we see like an annual PogChamps or some kind of series or is that something that you can, can talk to? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I'm really at liberty to, I mean, let, mm -hmm. let me, let me see if I, I am at liberty. Um, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> Let's do night. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so I guess what I would say is there might be another Pog Champs event. Um, mm -hmm. it's it's not completely clear if there will be, but but there there might be there 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 might be another one um going on. So, uh, you, you, what what was the specific question related to it? Um, just in terms of like the the newer formats, like what what exactly mm -hmm. can we can we see and like who's, um, are, like are you do you play a role in, in helping create these formats or who who's behind the scenes and in, in making events like this possible? So I think what, what's amazing about pog champs is that this was something that definitely was created by Twitch. It was not an idea either by myself or by, by the mods, of my channel. This, this was something that chat kind of, they, they saw these streamers taking up chess and they started, they st started thinking, well, like why not have an event? It would be a lot of fun. Um, so to me, the, this, the whole PogChamps idea, I certainly had some thoughts along this line, but, but it really was the chat that pushed it to a point where, where, like we, where like I was able to mention it to chess.com, and then I think chess.com and Twitch got together and made it a reality. So um, what'd you say? Queen. Queen, okay. So, so that's what's amazing about this. It's not like, it's not like I can't take, take credit for the idea. Um, it, it's, it's all about the, the chat and, and Twitch culture. They, they made it happen. Um, and then it was just a matter of getting the, the logistics sorted out, like who's playing and, and so forth. But really, it, it was all about Twitch. And that, that's what's great is that you can have like you can have all these different communities with, with all these different audiences and they come together and they ma make this happen. And it's something that everyone is really enjoying. Um, I, I think for me, one of the things that I was a little worried about with this event is that maybe some of the streamers would be really unhappy. Like, you know, for example, Nate Hill, who's very new to the game, he plays against Boy Boy. So obviously Boy Boy is going to beat him. That's not, that's not really in doubt. But the fact that they were able to have fun, they were enjoying it, um, it, it, really, is, it really is inspiring to see the way that, that everyone has, 
has had a really good mood in, mood, and there have been some incredibly um, some incredibly funny interviews between some of the participants. So it's been amazing, and I think um, I think there 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 should be nice. more events like this. As I said before, oh sorry, do you say a piece? Uh, well, you you moved. I was going to say night, but you, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. You I actually, I kind of forgot that I wasn't playing the game for move. a second there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no Which one? Uh, let's do queen. Okay. So so yeah. So like, I think again, where if you're trying to popularize the game, you're trying to make it more accessible. Where is the sweet spot of the people who are watching? And that's always going to be um that's that's going to be the people who have been exposed to the game, the people who are new to the game. And these sorts of events where you don't have geniuses playing, you don't have like you don't have a stacked field. Everyone has a chance and everyone's learning. Um, certainly, I think it's it's one of the best ways of, of promoting the game. Awesome. Um, now, yeah, I, I think we, we did get through through all the questions. Um, yeah, earlier a chat was, uh, I, I think, was taking credit for the, the PogChamps idea. So that was... Uh, well, I mean, I think that's how a lot, you know, a lot of stuff on Twitch... Uh, I guess just give me a piece first. Um, yeah, Rook. Okay. So, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of things on Twitch occur organically. It's not something that is set up in advance. Like, I, I mean, that, that's one thing that's very different, certainly, for me, is coming from, like, the chess, not, not maybe Rook. not the chess world, but having come from, the, from, like, the world that was not online, I'm used to structure. Like, it's like, I'm used to studying. I'm used to playing tournaments. You know, you play your game at this time. You play your game this time. Like, you know, you go eat. You have, you have these big routines. Um, and then when you come into the online world, routines, I mean, some people have routines, but most people do not have routines in general. Um, and so that, that's one thing that's really, really amazing with Twitch is that because people kind of do their own thing for the most part, do you say a move? Rook, yeah. Okay. Um, because people do their own thing for the most part, a lot of stuff ends up happening on the fly where chats talk to each other, the streamers, they like, they DM on Discord and then something happens, but it's very, um... It tends to be very organic and something that is not planned, which I which I really do like. It's it's quite different than 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 what I'm used to, where you know it's like it's not you know unlike a normal job, you don't you don't go to work, you know it's not like I have to be streaming at 9 a.m. every day, and you know from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's like I can stream at 9 a.m. I can also stream at noon. I can stream at 3 p.m. But there are all these sorts of um, unpredictable things that can happen. Um, really make it a lot of fun. Yeah, and what's your like? What's your favorite part about streaming? I said bishop, by the way. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think. Yeah, I think my fa favorite thing about streaming is uh, you said pawn, right? Pawn. Yeah. My my favorite thing about streaming is is just being able to interact with chat. Um, hear, hearing the stories, like there are many people who have, who have messaged me both on Twitter and Discord. And it's like you know. Uh, there are many where it's like, okay, I, I never played chess before, but because of XUC, I got interested in now I'm playing the game. Or people who say, you know, I played, I learned from my grandfather like 10 or 15 years ago and I'd forgotten about the game and now I'm liking it. When, when I see messages like that, that really, that really does reinforce that I'm, that I'm doing something that people enjoy. And, um, and, and that's the main thing is just hearing these stories, knowing that I'm doing something that actually is bringing people joy. Um, it really, that, that's what, that's what I enjoy the most is just the interaction hearing from all the different people from all the different backgrounds, really. Cause so many people on Twitch have come from such different, diverse, uh, backgrounds. You I say think night? we're in trouble. I said night, but yeah, I wasn't sure if you saw that, you fork with the pawn, but it, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, Let's do pawn. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing that I enjoy the most. It's just like having that interaction, being able to hear from so many people that like they're, they're enjoying, enjoying the streams, they're enjoying the content like that. That for me is what makes it worth it at the end of the day. And that like, that comes back to what I was actually saying on stream earlier. Like I was having this conversation. Some people were like, you know, they were talking about DMCA and this sort of stuff, but it's like, you know, if you look at something like Twitch versus say a platform like Mixer, again, yes, maybe maybe Mixer will offer some of these streamers a lot more money, but you're gonna end up losing that community and that that interaction with with the fans. Let's do Rook. Mm -hmm. Um and I think one actually one major kind of topic that we haven't touched on yet which would be good to get some some backstory on is like how you got started with twitch mm -hmm. like was there some sort of origin story um I, I did go back and like look at your very first like youtube videos and certainly a lot has changed since then but what what exactly got you started and um 
Yeah, yeah if you can talk a bit about so, that. So, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I guess I don't remember when my first stream on, on Twitch was, but it was essentially what happened is, is actually, I should remember the year though. This was probably 2017. Um, this is going to be story time a little bit for chat in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> so I think it was 2017. I was playing this tournament in the Isle of Man. Um, and I believe chess.com is one of the main sponsors there along with poker stars. And uh, one of the main guys at chess.com, Daniel Wrench, was there. And I think after one of these late rounds, uh, we all decided to go out to this really nice seafood restaurant down by, down by the waterfront um, in the Isle of Man. And Danny basically, what, what he was telling me was he's like, you know, tw streaming is it, it's a very serious thing. Like, there's a good chance that, that chess will become a, a big game. Um, or not a big game, sorry, a big uh, chess will become a big draw on Twitch. And if, if you stream, there is a chance that you'll become the, the ninja of chess. That, that's that's how he tried to sell me on the idea of streaming. Um, so I thought, okay, they're they're gonna help me out, help me with some of the tech stuff and get set up. Uh, is there a move you want to play first? Do queen. Okay. Um, so so basically, he was he was he was he basically gave me the selling pitch. Um, King. Okay. And, uh, and so I started streaming and it wasn't very big. It was for probably a few hundred people. Um, was, I'll, I'll try to trick him. It was for, it was for a, a few hundred people at the stars, maybe like three to 400 people who are watching. Um, and, and so I was just streaming occasionally, obviously I was very busy with serious chess tournaments, uh, at, at the time. And then it was in 2018, King. actually, what's that? King. Okay. So it was in 2018. I, I remember this very well. It was the same tournament, actually. It was, it was right around the time of the Isle of Man at the end of October. King. Okay. Um, so it was at, in, in October 2018, right before the World Championship match. And, uh, and, and I kind of decided, you know what? Things aren't going so great. I, I played this tournament. I lost my last round game, which, or second to last round game, which cost me a shot at first prize. I was sliding in the world rankings. I decided, King. you know, I want to be... I want to be very serious about streaming. It's it's something that I that I enjoy. I want to learn more about it and and try to try to um, be, become make it kind of like sort of like a career as well. Um, move, uh, bishop. Um, so it was, it was around this time in October, November of 2018 that uh, that the chess bay came along. Um, and as as most people know, she's been, she's been a longtime supporter of many of many many various chess streamers and chess communities. And as, as one pawn? thing, that, one thing, pawn, you said, okay. And so this is going to be slightly off. Uh, this is going to be off, off topic a little bit, but I think, I think chat still will probably understand what I'm saying. Um, pawn. okay. Move. Pawn. Okay. So, so, so what I was going to say is one thing that I like doing very frequently is reading books about business people or businesses. So I, I like trying to understand how, um, how these companies become successful or how individuals and their personalities lead to success. Like very specifically, um, I'll, I'll give you, give you an example. There's this book called American icon. It's about Alan Mulally, former, former executive at Boeing. He left Boeing rightfully. He went to, went to Ford. Um, and he, he beca became the CEO, turned the company around during the recession. Um, one, you know, one of the greatest CEOs in modern American history, uh, move King. Okay. And so what I'm trying to say, so like I read books like this and I try to learn like, what are these people doing? Like, what is it like in terms of a business that like makes, makes a difference? Like why is this person successful versus others? And when I read this book, what, what I, what I liked about it was kind of learning about the management style and about somebody where they like meet with all these different people, they hear all the different views and they try to implement it and learn from all these different people. Uh, move. King. Um, Bishop. So, so I, I read a lot of these sorts of books. And so when, when I, when I came into Twitch and I looked at it from what's that King. So, so when I came to Twitch and I started looking at it from a general perspective, it's like, well, who are the people who understand Now, This doesn't mean that people are necessarily going to be geniuses or you can find the right people to, to fit the right roles. But I was trying to figure out who are the people in chess who are doing things that make a difference. Um, King. Okay. Yep. I'll make it. So. So, so when I looked at the, when I looked at like the backdrop of chess, um, I saw that chess Bay was the person doing the most in the community, um, trying King. to grow the, what's that King King. Okay. Try, trying to do the most to grow the game. And, and so basically I had a very long, long conversation with her. It's like, what are my goals? What do I want to do with chess on Twitch? And what's that King. Okay. Um, I think you can take over at this point. I don't okay, know. If, sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's much we can do. Yeah. But, but basically, yeah, so it's like I, I basically looked and I saw who's doing things in the chess community. I decided, you know, I'm not a genius. Like, I might be able to play the game of chess well sometimes. Obviously not not in this game. Um, but 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 basically find the people who are doing things that are going to grow the community and are 
people who have an understanding of how to how to uh, how to make a difference. So basically, I spoke to her, and then at that point, um, she started essentially managing the channel, and it's it's been been sort of like just trying to do all the right things. It's like you know, do the right events, do the right kind of videos, just just put all the pieces together and make. Oops, I meant to take. I slipped. Whoops. Oop. Yeah, we're gonna lose this game. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically, I just I just decided to believe that there's someone in the chess community doing good things, and if I can, if I if I believe in what they're doing, I'm just gonna I'm gonna trust their intuition because they've been in the ch been in this online community of chess and Twitch for far longer, and they'll understand it. Whereas I'm I'm not gonna you know really understand. So it was mainly that, and then obviously there was a big chess boom at that point because I think there was a world championship in November, and Chess.com got a lot of uh, got got a lot of press out of that out of that match. I think at some point during that event there was something like maybe um, 70,000 watching, and so Chess had a temporary boom then, but then it kind of faded again because like there there were these matches between Forsen and Rackful, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we're gonna lose this game. Um, that's good job, Nathan. Um, good job, Nathan. Yeah. So. I think I think we can do one more. If you okay. want to. Um. Yeah. Maybe a, a quicker game. Sure. Okay. Sure. Like five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. So. Yeah. I think it's mainly like basically putting the faith, trusting, trusting. You know that 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 the people that that have the vision, that see a vision for the future, just hoping that it works out. I mean, I was very lucky because it, it did, but. I feel like whenever you go into something new, whether it's chess, whether it's a startup or, you know, starting a new business, whatever it happens to be, there are always going to be certain people who are, who have more expertise and more knowledge than you. And you kind of have to sort of make that leap of faith and trust the people. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot this is Hannah brain. Sorry. That's okay. Bishop. Um, so kind of just, you, you kind of have to take that leap of faith and trust certain people. In most cases, it probably, you know, it may or may not work out, but I kind of did that. And, um, and then like, I mean, we, we've seen, seen the growth, but really to me, just this growth in the last couple of months, you know, off of the collaborations, off of everything is just, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's been amazing and it's, it's great to see, to see the game of chess growing, to see, see various channels, um, growing as well. It's not just my channel. It's not just Botez's channel to see the fact that, that um, there's there's such growth, and there are people who, who who enjoy the game of chess. I mean, that's that's what you want to see at the end of the day. Um, so so for me, as someone who's played chess for, Lord only knows what, like 25 years or something ridiculous. Um, it's 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 something that that I've always wanted to see, and to see it happening now, um, it's it's very special. Mm -hmm. Um, let's do King. And in terms of like, I I did go back and watch like your your first couple of videos, and it just looks much different. You sound much different. Has streaming given you like more just more confidence, more comfort in in like broadcasting yourself to a wider generation? Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak on that a little bit? Sure. Is there there's our move first. Uh, pawn. Okay. So so yeah, w what I would say is that um in, in general terms, it 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 changes because. It's very, it's like, it's, it's very weird being a professional chess player because as a professional chess player, and this is not like some, some ego trip, but very oftentimes when I'm in the chess world and I'm at a chess tournament, I like, I walk on watch. What? Like I, I just do like the top grandmasters are worshiped in the chess world. Like we're, we're just like, you know, it's like everybody thinks we're the greatest thing ever. So when, when you take that and then you have to like, not only do you have to put yourself out there, but it's like, you're, you're in front of people who you can't see. It's a very strange, um, it's a, it's a very strange dynamic because you're, you, you're just not used to it. It's, it feels very awkward and so forth. Um, and, and so I think, I, I think for me, it took quite a while to sort of understand understand the culture try to you know just like not take myself too seriously bishop. um yeah bishop okay and 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 sort of just like relax i, I think that's the main thing is learning how to relax just be yourself um Two knights. okay let's move the knight <laughs> but but yeah so i mean that's kind of the point it's like when you're in the chess world you're basically it, i mean i i guess i would be like being let's say you're an actor for example let's say you're an actor and you're very successful and then you know with covid oh. going on pawn you said okay and, and you want to go from uh, like, you know, you, you want to come on Twitch and start uh, start start streaming or something like you're going to assume like because you're coming from Hollywood, like this, this whole backdrop, like you're, you're really famous. You're what'd you say? Bishop. OK, like you're really famous, really well known. And then you have to come to Twitch and it's like nobody, nobody. I mean, no, no nobody, no, nobody gives a shit who you are, basically. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, so like, it's the same thing with chess because in the chess world, like we're, we're so, such popular personalities to then go from that back to, um, back to this world where like, again, we're, we're essentially nobody. Um, like you really have to learn, to just relax, enjoy yourself and, and, and figure out what, you know, what people want. How do you bring the community together around the content that you're providing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And do you say Sorry, say a piece? Um, I don't think it's lagging. Oh, sorry. It's not our move. Sorry. It's not okay. our move. No, 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 I'm really losing my mind. Sorry. Just have to be conscientious of time. Uh, queen. Yeah. Sorry. I, I want to ask you um, a slightly unrelated question mm -hmm. about uh, j just because there's so much chess, so much more chess online these days. Uh, let's do Rook. Mm -hmm. um, how much, I guess, importance is your, are, are your online ratings? Um, cause it used to be that online ratings, I think had no, no significance, but, but nowadays, like I know, especially for you, you're kind of top, uh, top rated in blitz on chess.com. And, um, it, it's, it's just, you're reaching record high numbers. So do mm -hmm. you care much about your, your online rating? I'm, I'm asking that partly cause I think you, you lost maybe 300 points. From that, <laughs> it so. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think in general, like there, there's a varying mix. Like I think when I play. I would say there are certain people who, when I play them online, I actually, I really have to focus a hundred percent. I can't just like make random rook. moves and, and talk to chat. You said Rook, right? Yeah. Like there are a lot of people online or where I can sort of like, I have to pay attention, but I can kind of just make moves, interact with chat and still play at a pretty high level. And there are some people where I literally have to focus uh, like a hundred percent. So what's that? Right. Okay. Um, so for me, I don't, I try not to care about that rating that much. Um, unless I'm playing somebody who's like, uh, pawn. like a lot lower rated. So it, it's a, it's a fine balance. What'd you say? Pawn. Pawn. Okay. So there, there's a fine balance, but I tend not to focus too much on, um, on the rating as, as much as I can. Knight. And this 1200 is, uh, is putting up a, a fight. <laughs> Let's do Bishop. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I try not to focus on the rating, rating that much if, if, if I can, if I can help it, but it, I mean, I do like being number one, but unless I'm like swinging a hundred points or something, I don't really care, care that much. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, uh, chess.com asking if I'm still here, which I am, um, just, uh, what do I want to say? <laughs> Going back to, uh, just like the, the team that's helping you. I, I think one person that I don't think you specifically mentioned, but, um, I think has, has played a big role is, is Jaren mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, just having like amazing, uh, amazing kind of visual design for your, your YouTube thumbnails and, uh, just, uh, consistency of content, uh, especially across YouTube. Um, so was that, um, I guess at, at what point did you start like putting out extremely like just consistent YouTube content uh, and, um, like what role? Oh, uh, let's do pawn. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I would say again, it's, it's tied in. So originally when I started, um, started streaming, my videos were produced by chess.com specifically. Um, uh, Rook. So mo most of my videos, on. Mo most of my videos were, were produced by chess.com. And then as part of that transition, when I started, started letting chess be manage the channel more or less, um, uh, part of the, part of, part of what happened is, is that Jaren started working for chess.com and under that umbrella, he started doing videos for me as well. And certainly I, the number of people I've seen who have commented on the thumbnails that he has done. Um, it's, it's been, I've been very lucky that it's worked out, but it definitely a lot of credit does go to him because without, without his thumbnails, uh, I, I don't think the channel would be what it is today. Right.
but definitely I would say that, you know, the team as it is right now, I mean, it's chess Bay, it's Jaron and it's myself. And we, we tend to make, make a lot of decisions together. Gotcha. Do you have, like, uh, let's do queen. Do you see yourself like expanding the team in the future or needing to delegate more, like more tasks as your, your brand continues to grow? Or do you think you'll, you'll stay pretty lean as a, uh... Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that's very tricky um, in terms of being successful uh, was I, I mean, maybe this applies to all games. The streamers are, are like posting content on YouTube, but I feel like with chess specifically, it's very tricky because what I've, I guess it's Rook. Rook okay, is, is um, when you look at the game of chess in order to make successful videos, I think you have to have some understanding of the game of chess. I don't think you can have just any editor splice together videos and, um, and, and like kind of uh, just you know, splice it together and just throw it up and, and chess people are going to love it. You kind of have to understand the right spots, where you edit it, what you're doing. And so to me, like, I guess it's our move, right? Yeah. Queen. Um, so, so yeah, I think the fact that you need to, I, I really feel like you have to have someone who should. Someone who understands, someone who understands chess a little bit, um, in order to be be involved in this process. So therefore, I I don't really think that I'll I'll be expanding to have more people involved in in the near future. I mean, there are a lot of mods as well who do amazing things there. Besides Chess Bay, there were several other mods as well who were helping um, archive some of the clips last night and delete things. I mean, it's it's sort of all part of a team effort. But but definitely, uh, there there are many people who have helped. But Chess Bay and Jaron. Um, for right now, are the two people who I who who are doing the most work for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, GG. <laughs> was, uh... You did realize you missed a couple wins, <laughs> right? Really? At what point? Uh, move seventeen. I don't have the move numbers here. Uh, queen takes c two after c d c d. Ah. Uh... I just wanted to centralize a knight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I was so enthralled by your, your answers. <laughs> I was a little, yeah, no, no, it's, it's all good. I was just a little bit confused, but it, it's, it's all good. No worries. I'm just confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to work on my, my multitasking skills. Um, but th this has really been great. I really appreciate your uh, generosity with your time. Um, and it's, I'll have to go back and, uh, and probably okay. pick out a, a few quotes. Um, but uh but yeah, I really don't want to take up more of your time, but I, I do want to thank you and thank thank the chat for for being.